I give you this ring as a sign of our marriage in my body, I honor you. All that I am, I give to you. And all that I have, share with you. Within the love of God, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Okay. nabyeye junior dahari aza nyuma y'iminsi ibiri hanyuma ubwo akajya akajyaza nk'isenye z'ijoro agahindurira umwana akamuterura akamuhoza nta nicyo najya gankora muri cyo gihe kuko umwana yarakiri muto cyane akamuhindurira akamuhoza agasiga muri yamishije agasubira iyo ngiyeho babaga barwaniraga inkuru yo gutera urwanda ubwo nari mfite umwana umteta yarafite iminsi irindwi hanyuma ari kubwo narabibonaga ko amaherezo bazagenda ariko ubwo ariko sinari nzi ngo bazagenda uwe munsi nabwo yarambiye umunsi bazatereraho ariko kubera ko numvaga mbyiteguye mutima na nabifashe nkuko abimbiye ko agiye eta fan de freddy yari ce kwiryo buye nuko adui aturutsa kurya hari yaho nakweretse mu muhanda wa kaburimbo nuko arahaguruka yavuze ko ati adui yamekuja nicyo yavuze hanyuma intambara ibyatangiye nuko atubonye adui yatubonye hano ku musozi yarashe ayo masasu make nakubwiye rimwe niryo ryafashe eta fan de freddy nkano mu gahanga I think some people didn't want the news to spread yet, so they told him he was somewhere in the field and that he, they could not, he, this fellow could not see him. So the fellow insisted, he said he had somebody's message, he didn't even tell them it was my message, and that it was extremely urgent, so they blocked his way, he couldn't make it. So the fellow came back, talked to me on the phone. He told me Fred was alive, but that he was in the field. So I said, no, I'm not convinced, go back. And tell whoever is there, uh, I remember I told him to talk to the late Major Bayangana, to talk to the late Major Bunyanyezi, and so many others say that now to go and tell them that it is me and I want somebody to deliver a direct message to him. Because I wanted to prove whether he was actually alive, uh, as, as my, feeling, my feelings were telling me he wasn't alive. <laughs> byari ngombwa kugira ngo wenda umuntu ajya kurwana yiteguye gupfa cyangwa gukira uko ari twarwaniraga ngo dutahe nabo batahe wabo ngo bo kuzahera mu mahanga navuze ngo ni ibyo imana imuhira uko ridashira nange mbikomeza mu nyumvuga ngo cyokora imana idufashe urugamba yatangiye kururwana rwo kudasubira inyuma tuzatahe wacu rwanda the southwest of Kigali, the capital of Rwanda, in Komine Musambira, Prefecture Gitarama, lies a small village known as Muchiranze. 38 years ago, nobody knew that this little known village would be the birthplace of one of the greatest African freedom fighters, gallant soldier, and a brave combatant son of Rwanda, Major General Fred Rijema Gisa. <laughs> The little small boy Gisa was born of a Christian family in 1957 at the genesis of the much publicized conflict augmented by the selfish colonialists who were starting to tear apart the united people who had peacefully lived together for centuries. 
Fred's father, Kimonyo, had two wives, and Fred was born of the second wife, Gatarina Mukandiruma, who bore him two other daughters. Fred's mother recalls very vividly his early childhood. Tujeze <laughs> Zuko ubavaga ngo batutse mu gihugu ko bari bameze. Noneho ubwo afunguwe tukomeza gushaka kugira ngo tujye mu mahanga. Ne nabandi benshi ariko baragiye ariko twe twasigaye ahantu nkaho bataratera turasigara nyuma kimenye afunguwe ubwo Fred yari umwana utabizi. Nyuma aje abantu baduteranyiriza amafaranga tushaka imodoka ira dupakira turahunga tugeze ku mupaka wa Uganda eh twaje mu modoka y'i Kigali tugeze ku mupaka wa Uganda tubona amabase abase abarizo zitutwara zitujyana shungereza mu buhunzi ahantu mu zizo zari ziri mu makampo bubaka it was Crossing borders, rivers, hills, and through thick forests, the next destination in Uganda was a place called Kahunge, 54 kilometers to the east of Fort Poto town in the present Chivale district. Here, a reception center was set up to receive and prepare for all the incoming Rwandese refugees. It was a very trying time for a pastoralist family now without cattle to start afresh from scratch. They were faced with three options. One, to try and adjust themselves to land cultivation, which they had never tried before. Two, to stoop law, go and look after cows of some pastoralist Ugandans for pay, and option three was to get jobs as laborers anywhere available in the country. Well, I first got to know the late Major General Fred Wijama in 1963 when we met in uh, one of the refugee camps in Uganda where we were both living as refugees. That was at first time in Ankore, in a place called uh, Nshunjezi. Then uh, we grew up together in that camp, then we shifted and went to Toro in uh, another camp in a place called Gahunje, uh, near Kamwenje, uh, district headquarters. And uh, all those years we grew up together, we studied together in a primary school. One uh, separated when I went to senior secondary school in Ntare in Mbarara. And, uh, 
Later on, he went to Mbarara High School. But we are not in the same uh, class in the primary. There were some difficulties. We used to face a lot of difficulties in, in paying school fees and so on and so forth. And many times people used to miss years and would never, were not able to continue uh, the studies uh, straight away. So that's how we had a difference in, in, in I was a bit ahead of him uh, at the time of the, during the time of studies, especially in the... Unfortunately, Fred's father died soon after settling in Kahunje, thus leaving the family burden to his wife, who struggled through thick and thin to sustain it. Mama, to us, we Rwanda. I'm going to have a busy day. 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 I'm going to have a busy when the two are getting out, we have to go to the market to buy some vegetables. We have 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 to buy some Ariko at the same time ari nishuti yanje dukundana cyane aho tujye hose dufatanye ku ntugu ubundi most of the time twaba tujye naho mu muhanda nkananirwa akanterura kandi turi bakuru twese akameka so sinzi kuna bigereranya ari umusaza w'umuntu ari nishuti numvaga byose ari kimwe kuko naramukundaga bitumana twembi twumvikana ku bintu byose twakoraga ari ukubeshya tukabeshya hamwe ari kuvugisha kuri tukavugisha kuri hamwe yabarize nange nkarira nabandi zakababara ko bankubise bamukubise nange nkababara i remember one time papa ya yaramukubise yakoza makosa nsanze yamukubise kandi ari giwa mureze yes hari ibyo yari yakoze ndamurega Mureze papa ramu kubitara muhana nk'abandi bana ariko yararize ari gyumureze ndatanyana nange ndarira so my father I've got okay umuregeye ikisasa ko umukubise kandi ukarira so nicyo kirekanaga ko turi nshuti cyane The only primary school set up for the refugees known as Mpanga Primary School was located 7 kilometers from the refugee camps the school still stands as a testimony, but has been upgraded. It was here that Fred did his primary education from 1965 up to 1972, at the end of which he performed very well and was offered a place at one of the best secondary schools in Uganda, Mbarara High School in 1973. Fred found more boys from other refugee camps with whom he became friends. Not only did he get friends from Rwandese, but also from Ugandans, among whom was Brigadier Chef Ali, then known as Museveni, who became his very good and close friend. Fred's background started influencing him as he mingled with other students at Imbarara High School. The love for his people, the need for freedom not for only his people but the entire Africa kept growing in him, especially at the time when Uganda was in the crisis of dictator Idi Amin. We could find the Jisa and Museveni very well aware about the war which was in Nigeria, which was in Ghana. They were all equipped with such information. Uh, we developed friendship with the letter with Jema as early as 1974. When he, when he had joined the Barrera High School with me, and uh, we had, we were both sort of uh, recruits because we had joined the school, so we are being teased together. Uh, when uh, I joined, when 
I was having always interest in politics. And uh, when we became friends, I started to keep on discussing with him. And uh, after discussing with him several times, we started going together to read in the library. And this is how we picked. We together developed uh, this spirit of... Because we used to read Fredimo books and other liberated, liberation literature. And by so doing, we started to have, including say poems. Because I remember before we left for Tanzania, or Mozambique for that matter, we were both uh, reading a poem, which was, entitled, which was coming from a book called When the Bullets Begin to Flower. And this poem was, one, that poem which made us to go, which we went and read together, in the library was saying that it is not what you want or what I want, but what the nation wants. And uh, through this, we developed confidence to live and go to join the revolution. Uh, I recall one incident uh, when he used to move with another man who is Chef Ali and by name now is called uh, Museven. By then he was Museven. And uh, one time they approached one of the teachers, Mr. Ben Wakatogoro. Uh, they said they wanted to address members of staff. And the man he wondered how, what uh, these young men wanted to tell the members of staff. So he approached us in the staff at break time. He said, I have young men who would like to talk to you. So, well, the members of staff said, okay. If they have anything, tell us. Let's admit them in the staff room. So these young men, that is Jisa, as he was called, uh, he was allowed in the staff room with him seven uh, to come in the staff room and address us. So they started talking. By that time, that is, I think that's when Mao Zedong had died in China. And uh, in Uganda, this uh, the archbishop had been killed, the young Kani archbishop, Janan Rum. So these young men, when they came, they said, this the country, or no, they said the nation has, a, the world has lost a big man, a very important man, who was fighting for freedom in China. And then they started talking about, you know, about the French Revolution. Uh, they said these people, they rose and fought, these people were oppressing them in the in France. And then they said, we Ugandans, what are we doing? Why can't we rise and fight Amin? So when they started talking about that, we are scared. Because uh, by that time, you know, we had uh, this intelligence. Could be in members of staff even, and then uh, with the students. So we are scared of what they are, we are saying. We ran away from the staff room. And we left those young men there. And after we had left, they also went out. And uh, the following day, we had they had left the school. Fred and his friend's destination was none other than Tanzania then, the base of Pan-Africanism. Here, young Pan-Africanists converged to undergo military training with the aim of totally liberating Africa. For a complete year, 18-year-old Fred and his colleagues lived in this famous house located in the heart of Dar es Salaam, known as Kinondoni House. We met in Tanzania, I think I, I was 16 and he was, I think, I don't know, maybe 18. We were united by the fact that we were the youngest two people in the group. So, and from that time we just became uh, just like brothers. For that period, the young recruits were never allowed beyond the compound of this house. It is in Dar es Salaam that Fred first met Museveni, then training to fight against colonialists for the independence of Mozambique. In Zuma, I think I first met him in 1976. We were recruiting the young boys from Uganda to take them to Mozambique for training. The person who recruited the Ujema was a 
the interfere things had been in Mbarara, working as a youth worker. And then I think today he is getting in touch with this group of Mbarara. Dar es Salaam became Fred's second home as he trained and crossed over to Mozambique to join friendly more fighters. the period when we, we had not been together, I learned that actually I got the news from, from his mother when I went back for holidays, when I went home for holidays, the mother told me that Fred had disappeared. They did not know where he was. Uh, actually the story was they thought he had died, because when he was going he never told them, he never told me, because we were even not in touch at that time. So this was over a long period, nobody knew where he was. Most of the time we stayed in Mozambique, in a place called Montiquez, which is in Cabo Delgado province. At the beginning the life was not easy, because we were starving. We did not have enough food. I don't know whether this was part of the, the training, but it uh, later on made us be farm. So the life there was good because we were being trained, we had hope, we were being uh, politicized and all this. Fred's determination to liberate his people late along the entire Africa did not end with the independence of Mozambique. The experience he acquired later became very instrumental in the struggle against fascist Idi Amin in Uganda and the Fronasa led by Yoel Museveni. The struggle which saw the fall of Idi Amin in 1979 was but just a preparation for what was later to be yet another bigger one made by Museveni against dictator Milton Obote. The war which basically started in Luero Triangle, central Uganda, spread like bushfire as Fred initially took charge of commanding fighters in the western part of Uganda. This gave Fred a chance to be in touch with his mother again. 1985. Uh, we were together when the forces moved from Moreira Triangle and went to the mountains, Urenzoro Mountains. Uh, that was uh, another time uh, we happened to operate together. So during the movement to, to the mountains in the different battles that we fought on the way as we were going, it was very clear, he, he performed very well as a very good commander in the different operations used to carry out, to carry out even when we had reached uh, uh, the mountains. With the crushing of the remnant of the defeated military junta soldiers and the total liberation of Uganda, Fred earned himself the post of deputy army commander of the NRA. In that same period of time, Fred had to fulfill one of the most important obligations of life. Fred had chosen himself a young beautiful partner, Jeanette. In 1989, in a colorful ceremony, Fred laid his best half to the altar at Namirembe Cathedral and pronounced, I will, before a fully packed church.
ceremonies were followed by a grand colorful reception which was held at the State House in Tebe and was honored with the presence of His Excellency President Yoweri Museveni. Now a family man lived with his wife Janet in Kansanga, another residential area in Kampala. Fred's love for children was rewarded with the couple being blessed with two children. The eldest boy Junior Gisa Rugamba and the youngest sweet little girl Teta Gisa Tracy. Hari ntambara muri Uganda barwaniraga ahantu hitwa amagamaga na nabye junior dahari aza nyuma y'iminsi ibiri hanyuma ubwo akajya akajya za nkisenye z'ijoro agahindurira umwana akamuterura akamuhoza nta nicyo najyaga nkora muri cyo gihe kuko umwana yarakiri muto cyane akamuhindurira akamuhoza agasiga muri yamishije gasubira iyo ngiyeho babaga barwaniraga hitwaga magamaga ntago hari hafi hari urugendo agasubira nk'isa 9 z'ijoro buri gihe akajyaza isa henye z'ijoro agasubira yo sakinda a year later fred was to be further elevated the post of deputy minister of state for defense in uganda a position which gave him time and a chance to plan for the execution of his long term objectives of leading his people back home from exile and the liberation of entire rwanda from the fascist sectarian regime of dictator Habyarimana. The discreet plan, which never leaked despite the involvement of top members of RPFA, is indicative of determination the Rwanda refugees had to return home by any possible available means. <laughs> ndamubaza ndese ubugiye he ati tujye kurwana na habyarimana natwe dutahi wacu ara ndaceceka mbe mbanza no guceceka giza ati uceceka mu dusabire tuzabonana namwe tubacuye mutahi mu giye mu Rwanda tubasezeraho baragenda I remember icyo gihe yaravuye America mu September anyura Nairobi nari Nairobi araza aranterefona njya ku airport nabantu ba Uganda embassy tujya kumufata ku airport tuvuyeyo abwira abantu bo mu embassy ko adashobora kuraraho bamuteguriye ari buze kurarana nange mu rugo aho nabaga 
araza we went straight to Jamurugo iwacu turarya turasangira hari abantu yari suppose ku meeting Nairobi tujya in the evening we had dinner to turya hamwe badutumiye turangije ba aramga ati nashaka ko dutaha kare atari ibintu ushaka ko tuganira so turatahana driver tujejeje mu rugo aramga ati ndashaka ko tureba ahantu twicara tukaganira kubera ko hari ibintu ushaka kuvuga kandi ntashaka umuntu wawe wese kubyumva ndavuga ntacyo byari ara byari nko mu masaha 5 y'ijoro tujya mu cyumba turi kingirana aramgira ati araho nzajya kandi ati nizeye ko uzabyumva kandi ukahambera nka mushiki wanje ati ndabize kuri very hard working woman ati ibizaba byose uzaye facing nkuko bibonye ati hari umugore wanje se nabana babiri hari mama wanje nkunda na mushiki wanje muto yasize ati ikizabaho cyose ati uzitegure kucyumva kise ni kucyumva za gutyo ati ndabikubwira gusa ati sishaka ko bizaguca intege ati dushobora gutaha anytime tukajya mu Rwanda avuze mu Rwanda ndavuga eh murashaka se kujya ku Rwanda harambira ati bishobotse ati dushobora gupfa cyangwa se dushobora gukira inkuru yo gutera u Rwanda ubwo nari mfite umwana umteta yarafite iminsi irindwe hanyuma ari kubwo narabibonaga ko amaherezo bazagenda ariko ubwo ariko sinari nzi ngo bazagenda uwe munsi nabwo yarambiye umunsi bazatereraho ariko kubera ko numvaga ngiteguye umutima na nabifashe nkuko abimbiye ko agiye On September the 30th, 1990, Fred's plan hatched and his dream of leading his people back home came true. That constant urge not only within him, but also from a people who had looked at him as a Moses, overrode all antagonistic forces that could have probably compelled him to turn a deaf ear to that call. All was set and the plan was executed. The exodus was effected at night, and by the morning of the 1st October, Fred had done his duty of leading his people into the promised land. Uh, he told me about uh, trying to make contact and to organize so that they, uh, they could, in the end, uh, struggle peacefully for their return. But he didn't tell me about invading Rwanda. He never told me about this, and I was not happy with this. What were your reaction when he told you about his intentions to have back his people, not not the the invasion? That was all right. I had no problem with that one. If they had done it politically, if they had, uh... in fact, that's what I advised him. I said, you organize politically. You go to the UN. You go to OAU. First, make your case known, so that uh, it's not because one of their mistakes was that they. We uh, sort of ambushed international opinion. International opinion was not prepared for their struggle. But then they just straight away to, uh, transferred it to a military stage. The military stage should always be a last stage in, 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 in fighting. So that f first people know your different standpoints. Uh, now, these, these boys did not exhaust that. That was one of their uh, mistakes. They just went, misused our, our base here to, to, to go and start a war without proper preparation. So we're not happy with that, uh, with that, uh, that way. You remember we, we denounced them, but uh, we didn't follow it up. We were not vindictive with them. Because on the one hand, we understood their frustration, but we also did not like their indiscipline, because this was indiscipline. You see, it was indiscipline to, to use our, our territory and uh, use our army to start such a big operation. Uh, it was very irresponsible uh, for them. The crossing point was the small border town of Kajitumba. <laughs> A 
It is at this point in this very customs house that Fred sat, called the fighters to order and drew their attention to the fact that they were home and urged them to swear never to allow to go into exile again. For the first time after 34 years, Fred was back home, this time old enough to understand the feelings of being a Munyarwanda citizen in his country, Rwanda. On that fateful morning of the 2nd October 1990, at 9.30 a.m., Fred mobilized his fighters and started advancing towards Chigali. As to what happened, the full story is narrated by the eyewitness and Fred's faithful bodyguard, Captain Happy. Twaje tuva muri Uganda nyine ikamara itariki 33 z'ukwezi kwa 9 muri 99 twahagurutse nka saa 6 za nijoro urugendo ruha rero kuvayo kugera inahangaha ni rurerure twageze hano ari mu gitondo ari yo nyine itariki ya mbere Peter van der Fred yageze hano ku mupaka hano uyu niyo mupaka w'u Rwanda na Uganda uko twaje rero twaturutse muri ya muhanda uri iri munsi ya musozo reba uyu musozo ni mira mahiru turaza gutya hari hakurya niyo zo customs za Uganda hanyuma wa manuko yaje hari aho kaburi bitangiriye aho ni ho Rwanda rutangiriye niho twasize imodoka turazamuka gutya namaguru kugeza gihe twagere hari hageze imodoka twahisize hane nyuma tuzamuka namaguru acumbika muri iri yanzu reba Desakai, Iranje, Jisaniria, Vuyo. Ahonga, Horero, Nihot Kwarae, Jorogi, Tarichi Ambere, Anima, Tarichi Kabiri, Nugot Kwaha Vuye, Tuja, Nine Guhura, Navariva Dute, Kokovariva, Menyakot Kwaha Jezemurgan. A Wundi Zari, Barivatara, forming as a battery and Neza Ariko, Kuberayuko, A Vasilika, Uruguanda, Variva, Jenny Nabo. Baje kureba icyabaye ku mupaka bahise leta van der Fredi yohereza a force imwe na leta damu ica inzira yo hasi igitaka ica nyabwishongwizi muri ruhande rw'iburyo hanyuma leti leti bunyenyezi nawe akomeza mu ruhande rw'ibumoso nabandi basirikare natwe dukomeza yakabura imbona leta van der Fredi tugana nyabwishongwizi muri inzira turagenda duca munsi ya ruya rutoki nibo twatangiye twuri ruya musozo nyabwishongo izi nyinyi ureba tuzamuka muri ako kayiru ureba tugera hejuru hari akugati niho twahagaze hejuru yawo Akagaso zituriho niko nyabwishongwizi hanyuma hari ahepfo bareba nakagira niko kagabanya urwanda na Tanzania niho abasirikare bare timunyenyezi bari bari abare tadamo aho bare bari bungubu ni nyuma y'umusozi nti wababona hanyuma adui yaturutse muri kaburimbo hari ya ureba hageze nk'inka hakurya mu ikona rya rya kabiri adui niho yaturutse azana ka jeep ageze hano mu ikona rya kabiri Hano hureba hasi ageze nk'umuga uri kwigare niho yahagaritsa kamodoka ke natwe twatumaze gutunguka inyuma hano ku musozi aho turi bugere hano inyuma gatoya hano turi ni aho adu yarahagaze ajya kurasa nyine bareba kare hagati kare kare ku hejuru y'umusozi kare ya gatoya nubungu nuko cyakuze cyane ubundi kare gatoya cyane niho twari dutungutse adu yari hano abonye dutungutse ari hejuru gasozi Nibwo yarasaga ayo masasu nyine yarashimake ya havuye muri mwe ryafashe leta Rafael Fred. Leta Rafael Fred yari ice kwiryo buye nuko aduwe aturutsa kurya hari yaho nakweretse mu muhanda wa Kaburimbo nuko arahaguruka yavuze ko ati adu ya mekuja nicyo yavuze hanyuma intambara ibyatangiye nuko atubonye adu yatubonye hano ku musozi yarashe ayo masasu make nakubwiye rimwe niryo ryafashe leta Rafael Fred nkano mu gahanga Nicyo kitwemeza yuko no kugira ngo tuvuge yuko atari twe twari target ya duyi ni ukubera yuko nyine ryamufashe hano kugahanga wenda kwegera ku musatsi niryo 
sasa rya mufashe kubera yuko yari na muremure adusumbaga ariko yugira ngo yari yicaye ntago ryo sasa rya rya mufashe ko twese twari duhari ariko nta wundi muntu wigeze hakomerekera aho ngabo twari turi nuko amaje kuraswa twabonye ko yavuze ko ati adu ya meni piga noneho tubona acitsi intege ari carasi turamufata twageregeje kumubaza icyabaye ariko nyashoboye kuvuga irindi jambo naho ngaho nicyo jambo yavuze ryo nyine ubugerekeye ibyo umwambazaga ko yaravuze twarabaye tuhita tuvuga ku gasozi twari turiho turamuterura duhamagara abaganga ariko bagiriye kwagera basanze nyine yapfuye nuko twahamaze munsi twaramanutse tujya hepfo ariko ubwo intambara yo ntago yahagaze yarakomeje kuko nabandi basirikare ntago bari babizi tukomeza no kubisha kugeza igihe nyine abakuru bacu baje kubibwira abasirikare bose kuko nta muntu wari ubizi hangewe icyo navuga kuri Leta Fund Freddy ngewe nari umwe mu biba bodyguard be ariko nari maranye nawe igihe nta kibazo najyaga mubonaho nubwo yari cyongozi wacu bwose twamufataga nka mukuru wacu kandi akaba natuyobora tugeze mu Rwanda rero cyatubabaje cyane twari tururaye muri mwe itariki ya kabiri nyine ubwo yapfaga nta kintu yatubwiye nta nicyo yabwiye abandi basirikare twari twazanye mu Rwanda ah ngewe amagambo navuga nsezerera kuri Leta Fund Fred nuko imana ya maha iruko ridashira nibyo na vuga gusa nta kinini nasubiza nabyakiriye ko byari ngombwa yuko byari ngombwa kugira ngo wenda umuntu ajya kurwana yiteguye gupfa cyangwa gukira uko ari twarwaniraga ngo dutahe nabo batahe wabo ngo bo kuzahera mu mahanga navuze ngo nibyo imana imuhira uko ridashira nange mbikomeza mu nyumvuga ngo cyokora imana dufashe urugamba yatangiye kururwana rwo kudasubira inyuma tuzatahe wacu Rwanda ba telefone around 3 o'clock ni njoro i remember no mugore wa telefone arambira ati joy ati nize ko udacika umugongo atari ko ati fred yapfuye ati kandi ati turagushaka kugomba kuzi inaheje mu gitondo kos aho kanya nari ndyamye ciki intege mera nabi ara nka sa 10 narenjinga ntangira ntekereza ikintu ushaka kugenda iba ngiye mu Rwanda iba ngiye Uganda ntabwo narenza honya kuko numvaga ko ngomba kujya mu Rwanda bishobotse nagenda mu Rwanda nka nareba naho yapfiriye naho bamuhambi bo mu gitondo cyakare mfata indege na ifite ticket nza Kampala ngumana na mama huko bisanzwe nyina yagahinda tukagumamo inkuru nayimenye ninjoro ne nayimenye ninjoro hari haje mama we na mushiki we twa Jacqueline na Gregory na madame we nundi mugabo witwa mutenda nkibabona gutya ndababwira nti nabimenye nti niki ko nabonaga batabababaye nayimenye ninjoro even before I was directly told about what happened, I had a feeling something had gone wrong. This feeling came to me and I even talked to some of my friends that I was feeling uncomfortable that something had gone amiss, something had gone wrong. This was in my feelings, first of all. Secondly, it was in my judgment about what was going on on the ground that I was receiving from the news about what was I, I could detect there was something wrong. I had dreamt, I, I used it to dream, I didn't want to say I was feeling, I, I just said I had dreamt that even Fred had died. But this was just a feeling, there was something in me that something had gone wrong with Fred. Then I think it was on um, the seventh day, when I actually got to know from someone that something had gone wrong. And this was after I had had this feeling, I called somebody in, in, in Kampala and uh, 
told him to go straight to Kajitumba and follow through wherever they are to go and uh, make sure he sees Fred himself, talk to him, and then this person should come back to me and tell me that he has seen Fred. Not that he has heard from him through some other person or something. The first day he did not succeed. I told him on, I think, on the fifth day. That on the fifth is when I sent him. So he went that very morning, went, met some commanders, tried to talk to him. I think some people didn't want the news to spread yet. So they told him he was somewhere in the field and that he, they could not, he, this fellow could not see him. So the fellow insisted, he said he had somebody's message. He didn't even tell them it was my message and that it was extremely urgent. So they blocked his way, he couldn't make it. So the fellow came back, talked to me on the phone. He told me Fred was alive, but that he was in the field. So I said, no, I'm not convinced to go back and tell whoever is there. Uh, I remember I told him to talk to the late Major Bayangana, to talk to the late Major Bunyanyezi, and so many others say that now to go and tell them that it is me and I want somebody to deliver a direct message to him. Because I wanted to prove whether he was actually alive, uh, as, as my, feeling, my feelings were telling me he wasn't alive. Uh, well, I'm really saying this story, it, it's fun as it sounds, people may not believe it, but this is what was happening. And uh, so the, the fellow went back, I think same night, so he insisted. Again, he couldn't make any headway until somebody, a friend of his who was privy to the information that Fred had died, actually told him, he said, you quietly go and tell him that Fred is dead. Then he called me and, and told me, yes, that he actually has proven that he, Fred had died. Well, I tried to ask what of, what he had died of. The fellow simply said he, he didn't know and that even the person who told him didn't want to go further. So that's when, of course, I, I confirmed my kind of feeling. But this time, I did not now even talk to my wife about it, uh, with whom I was, so I just kept quiet. I was, had already started winding, winding up. I had already told the commanders of the college that uh, I wasn't going to continue the course and that I wanted to go back. I told them right on the first day. And uh, so I was busy parking, handing over things. I wanted to leave after handing over everything. I didn't want to leave any, any debts, anything behind in, at the college. So I took my time to pack my things and, uh, and leave the college. In a combat you can't predict whether you'll you be over. So his death came just uh, as, it, it, it was just a tragic, it was a tragic event. By then when we knew that he has died, we tried all our best to conceal it. So we concealed it from other officers, junior officers, or other soldiers to know it. Because, because by then you would fail. If they knew, you would fail. It was our second day. Some of us, we, we, we were not even, we were, we were not known like he was. So, when I got the news of his, of his death, then I got, I, I knew, the Rwandan people had lost a very dear leader, someone who could unite and keep the society distinct. I even believe it now, but uh, that is how I got it. It was a shock, first of all. Secondly, I knew we, the people had lost uh, the person who could unite people more and who was a strict disciplinarian. No, our training expects uh, really does not matter. You know that he has died. He has died not stealing. He has died. He has died performing a mission. And you, the only thing that you wish is to see the end of that mission he has died for. 
So that's normal. That's very normal with us. It's uh, if he dies, you get more angry. You get you, you feel that you should achieve what he died trying to achieve. And that was the end of Fred, but not the end of the struggle. His death father enkindled in the fighters the urge to fight on and accomplish the work he had started, the fruits of which were seen when the gallant fighters of RPA crushed the dictatorial murderous sectarian regime of Ayurimana, restored peace and sanity in Rwanda, and ushered in a new era where once again the people of Rwanda would live as brothers and sisters irrespective of their ethnic differences thus confirming the fact that Fred's death was not in vain. Fred Rwigema mu byukuri yaba nari nzi kwivuga na mu kwina kubise ikivugo ariko uko muzi uko kanda nagaragara ni intwari koko ni umugabo ukwiriye ishema ni umuntu ukwiriye ibisigo ibisingizo cyane bishingiye ku butware yagize kuva kiri umwana kubitekerezo yagejeje ku banyarwanda no kwinjiza abanyarwanda bagenzi be mu gihugu no guhumuriza abari imbere ko bagiye kwigobotora ubutegetsi bubi bikaba byarabaye Fred Gisaru Yema was a great man who had to live an ordinary life uh, his greatness i think prevailed over such a issues as harassment segregation and outright opposition by certain forces during his time in exile. In my opinion, his, great, his greatest ambition or dilemma was to successfully launch the armed struggle to return his people to their motherland and not necessarily to see the end of the struggle. Uh, not many men can wish to, to saw what they will never harvest. Only men of conviction like him can do this or could do this. The forces against him were such that self-preservation was impossible. And I believe he knew 75% he was likely to be killed in action. I also know that he had an option to take the matter to the OAU or comfortably enjoy the benefits of being the Deputy Minister of, of, of Defense in Uganda. But his conviction prepared him to act and risk. I think this is called human sacrifice, which can only be attributed to great men. I also knew Fred as a man who envisage, uh, envisaged a united people of Rwanda. I have faith that those who took over after his death will honor his wish and build up to that vision. And I can assure him that all his friends miss him. But we all appreciate that he did exactly what was expected of him. He will always live with us. It was uh, interesting to see how active he was in the struggle, how committed he was. So I knew him as well as that during the war, and then after the war, we, we, we shared a few close uh, relationships, uh, even with the people we associated with. So during that time, that's when I knew him as a freedom fighter. But I knew him much more closely during the war, uh, uh, and during the Bush war. As a matter of fact, the day we were going to start the war, when we were going to attack Kawamba. I am the one who went and uh, informed him and immediately he didn't hesitate and uh, joined us and we went together right from the beginning. He was among the first 27 who attacked Kawamba. Kumasanga, aziku huza baanu, kumashira hamwe, ukawona kundwenda baanu venshi, chane chane, akundwe na basirikare kandi bamwizeye cyane kimwe kwi wasanga baha ikizere wo muri ruhanda kumva yuko ari ruhande rw'umuntu ushoboye aho yamubwira ati gihanga akabona yahajya ari ntacyo yikanga 
icyo bara nta wundi muntu wari ugifite mu twari turi hamwe bose ikindi basanga afite nuko mu mu ngorane twagiraga yamenya kuzidukuramo nziko twanagize nkebyiri nini mu muryango ariko niwe washoboye kuzidukuramo harizo twagize mu muri executive committee y'umuryango 